Back in 2021, Coinbase was one of the most profitable cryptocurrency companies. They should be the ones who could survive a Fed tightening cycle. Sadly, given that the share price has decreased by 50% since its direct listing in April, their success seems only to be short term. What's good you guys? This is Market Thrive. And today, we're going to talk about how Coinbase, a cryptocurrency exchange, has grown and declined. Before we start the video, I would just like you to do me a favor by just hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification down below to keep you updated on this channel. So without further ado, let's hop into it. Coinbase is a platform where you can buy, sell, and transact in cryptocurrencies. It was among the first cryptocurrency exchanges to be established back in 2012, and today it dominates the industry. Nearly 10% of the world's cryptocurrency assets are held by its customers. They earn money through charging transaction fees on cryptocurrency trades, as well as fees from various subscriptions and other value-added services. Transaction fees account for 93% of their total revenue, and retail customers account for 95% of those fees. Therefore, despite their claims to be a diverse crypto economy organization, they are mostly an app that people use to speculate on cryptocurrencies and, to a much lesser extent, to enable payments in the real economy. We'll examine the costs associated with the hypothetical trade involving 100 bitcoins as Coinbase fee structure is a little complex. Coinbase and Coinbase Pro are two separate platforms that they truly have. Every time you purchase or sell cryptocurrency with Coinbase, a fee of about $3.50 is assessed. Therefore, if you purchase 100 worth of Bitcoin, the value immediately decreases to 96.50. Coinbase Pro charges a substantially lower rate. You pay roughly half a percent for transactions under $10,000, and as the transaction amount increases, the percentage of the cost decreases. Their transaction revenue is closely connected to the cost of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. The worth of their clients' holdings increases when there is a bull market in Bitcoin. They charge a percentage, thus this immediately raises their income. Bull markets also tend to raise the general buzz around cryptocurrencies, which encourages more people to establish accounts and start trading. A 5% fee might not seem like much, but it quickly adds up. If you actively trade cryptocurrencies, even if you simply purchase or sell once a month, you'll accrue fees of 6% over the course of a year. This places you at a severe disadvantage where it would be simple to lose money even if cryptocurrency values rose gradually. The majority of US stock brokerages now provide commission-free trading. We are aware that nothing is ever truly free. Market makers like Citadel take a small cut of every deal executed on ostensibly free platforms. However, the majority of the time, this amount is insignificant, making up less than tenth of the order value. Even when you utilize Coinbase Pro, the costs are significantly more than that. In fact, compared to stocks, which have been around for decades, cryptocurrencies are a lot more recent asset class. So you should anticipate greater costs at first. But compared to other crypto brokerages, Coinbase charges substantially greater fees. Although it offers nearly identical functionality to Coinbase, the largest cryptocurrency exchange outside of the US, Binance, charges costs that are 5 to 10 times lower. Jim Chanis thinks that Coinbase's high fees are unsustainable and that even if the cryptocurrency markets do well in the future, its revenue may fall. Coinbase has significantly increased both its user base and revenue over the past several years as the cryptocurrency markets have exploded, from $500 million in revenue in 2019 to about $8 billion in 2021, a 15-fold growth. They spend about 15% of their revenue on transaction costs. This indicates that they are marking up what they are costing you by approximately 7 times their own internal costs. Despite investing much in sales and marketing to draw in new clients, this has enabled them to report net profits. Additionally, it enables them to pay their senior executives hefty salaries. Despite having some of the highest fees in the industry, they have still been able to grow quickly, reaching nearly 90 million customers by the end of 2021, thanks in large part to CEO Brian Armstrong whose total compensation in 2020 was $60 million or more than four times that of Apple CEO Tim Cook. Their standing as one of the oldest and most reliable crypto platforms is one of the factors contributing to this. When they became the first pure play crypto platform to list on a stock exchange in 2021, their reputation was further enhanced. They retained their customers' coins in cold storage, virtually eliminating the possibility of loss due to a hack. It is among the safest platforms due to its strict security measures. 
You may feel secure knowing that your cryptocurrency is secure with Coinbase and that you won't be taken advantage of. Many new investors began investing in cryptocurrency for the first time in late 2020 and early 2021. When you're starting off, you're probably willing to put up with paying a few additional dollars in fees rather than taking a chance with a dubious offshore exchange. In the beginning, Coinbase was the only option. Though nearly every retail brokerage and fintech company started hopping on the bandwagon after seeing the dramatic rise in fat profit margins that Coinbase was producing. Nowadays, practically all retail brokerages, including PayPal, Cash App, Robinhood, and others, allow you to trade cryptocurrencies. Additionally, their transaction fees are on par with or less expensive than Coinbase. There are also innumerable firms that have raised billions from venture investors to spend on acquiring customers. This is exemplified by Crypto.com paying Matt Damon millions of dollars to begin an ad with such excellent production value that is easily mistaken for a movie teaser. This is the same business that invested $700 million to redesign the Los Angeles Lakers Stadium with a prominent display of Crypto.com. Bitcoin trading is not complex science. A new trading platform that can perform nearly all of Coinbase's capabilities can be developed by pretty much any technological corporation or even a startup. A race to bottom invariably results when there is so much competition for a commodity product like this. The cost of competing businesses advertising must rise steadily. Because they must compete on price, their profit margins are also decreasing at the same time. Additionally, the level of competitiveness has increased. Bitcoin has been on an erratic downturn dropping 25% of its value in the last 12 months. In 2021, Coinbase recorded a $3.6 billion net profit. This gives them a price-to-earnings ratio of roughly 12 based on its current pricing, making it nearly seem like a value company. However, Jim Chanis contends that given the exceptional circumstances of the period, these earnings figures are mostly unimportant. The term over-earning refers to a company's extraordinarily high profits over a period of time in the realm of finance. The best illustration of this is Moderna. They currently have a six-price earnings multiple, which makes them appear to be a deep value company. Since everyone will eventually be inoculated and demand will decline, these profits are obviously unsustainable. Extrapolating a company's sales growth over the next few years is extremely risky whenever it happens. Companies typically go public when they believe they can receive the highest valuation, which exacerbates this issue. Many of the ID firms that went public in 2020 and 2021 were sought winners. They either provided work from home services or were in the losing business and profited from the Fed's money printing. Nearly exactly at the local peak for the price of Bitcoin, Coinbase floated its shares. Their sales and profits were at an all-time high at this period, making it simple to sell their stock on Wall Street. This provided an opportunity for early investors and business executives to sell their shares for a profit. The company's co-founder and CEO Brian Armstrong lost little time in selling about $300 million worth of shares on the first day of trading. The fourth most expensive real estate deal in California history, he might have utilized some of these funds to purchase a $133 million US dollar mega house in Bel Air. IPOs and stock market valuations have a strong inverse relationship. Just supply and demand really. Companies are inclined to issue new shares when stock prices are high in order to profit from these high prices. This may possibly be the cost of the low average returns on IPOs. 64 IPOs underperformed their relevant index by 10 or more after 3 years. Since Coinbase is a legitimate business, they probably keep playing a significant part in the cryptocurrency economy for the foreseeable future. However, it should serve as a warning to all investors to avoid buying into the euphoria surrounding initial public offerings made at the height of their economic cycle. How about you guys? What do you think about this? Let me know what you think about all this by leaving a comment down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. And if you want to stay updated on our posts, hit that subscribe button as well. Once again, this is Market Thrive, signing off.